Howdy mates, what you saw just a moment ago, you know in the beginning of the film you were seeing some examples of roseate spoonbills, great egrets, and even snowy egrets too. However though, even further in the distance, way back there, you know, looking towards the center of the frame, those are American white pelicans. And by the way, if you did not know, American white pelicans are one of the largest uh, Native American birds to exist, you know, in terms of both the length of the bird as well as even the weight, too. American white pelicans can weigh quite a bit. I don't remember the exact number, but it's definitely well above 10 pounds. I think it was approximately 50 if I'm not mistaken, but I'll be sure to double check on that. But we are indeed at the Mayaka River State Park. It's always a pleasure to come back out here. And this is essentially the upper Mayaka Lake. But given that now we have approached into the dry season, the water levels have actually receded quite a bit. And just way out there in the distance, is the famous bird walk, which I am under the impression that it is still closed at the moment, which is very unfortunate. But anyway, you know, when I was talking about the roseate spoonbill, I'm going to try to see if I can... See, the thing is, it's like you can get close, but then it turns so blurry, which I really do not like that. But anyway, I'll provide, you know, images, of course, that show them a bit more better. But roseate spoonbills are, of course, noted for having their pink plumage. But the thing is, some people may think that they are flamingos, but they're not. They actually fall in a completely different family. I believe the I believe flamingos fall under metaves, whereas the roseate spoonbills fall under uh, coronaves, in terms of like the two separate families. So though they have similar plumage, they're not related by any means. Now, what really is responsible for creating? some of the pink plumage that you see on roseate spoonbills is it has to do with their diet. So usually a most common food source that roseate spoonbills love to eat, most of them have exoskeletons made out of uh, chitin, which is a form of uh, protein that makes the outer exoskeleton. So it gives it its structure. So crustaceans are a great example. And essentially it is that chitin that helps form that pink pigment that you can see on their plumage. So I think I want to try something real quick. Give me just a sec. There you go. There's one up close. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. Now... When it is breeding season, which it actually is right now, I believe it lasts from like January to April, if I'm not mistaken, the males will actually have bright pink feathers. And that's just a way for the males to essentially attract the females. Now you may be wondering for another, why is it that they are called spoonbills? Well, it's literally the shape of their bill. It's very similar to a spoon. And funny thing, the function is actually very similar. It acts like a spoon. So usually they'll swipe from side to side when they're hunting. We've got some snowy egrets that are standing beside. But yeah, you can see that they are looking for food right now. That's the primary objective. 
Holy cow, this is difficult. There you go. There's another one coming in hot. Now their distribution is commonly in the southeast United States. You can even see them in Texas, too, for another. I know that was quite the change there, but anyway, there was a point when they were hunted. Well, I shouldn't say hunted, but they were nearly exploited to the point of extinction because, you know, when the plume trade was going on, development, much of the wading areas were being wiped out. And that's just it. These wading birds, they need to have territory where they can hunt and be near water. That's why they are called wading birds in the first place. As soon as water is gone from an area, they'll be gone too. They always follow the water. But yes, Mayaka River State Park. It's This is a great time of the year to go and visit. You know, to just have an understanding of just seeing the food cycle right now as it is. And the neat thing about the energy cycle, or the energy cycle, food cycle is each trophic level that you go up, there is a 10% change in energy level. I'm going to clarify if it is an increase or a decrease, but I believe that it is a decrease. But like I said, I'm going to be sure to clarify because I don't want to provide false information. So that's why I've always provided description in my videos. That way I can also help clarify. All right. If you haven't been, any of you... Of course, I would highly recommend. And for those of you who have been here, totally revisit. It's truly a gem in a portion of South Florida. And it is one of the closer state parks to my uh, place of residence. It's probably about mm, maybe 45 minute drive, give or take. But yeah, they are so abundant right now. So, all right, you guys, take care. Enjoy your Sunday. And journey on a journey is, of course, onwards. Take care, folks. See ya.